Good well, morning, welcome, Lila. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Welcome yeah. to the programs and services subcommittee meeting for November. Uh, so the first item on our agenda is welcome introductions and announcements. So um, let's just go ahead since there are just five of us and do um, just a brief introduction. And if we have any announcements, we'll we'll share them at the same time. Um, so Monique, if you could just call us one by one. I know that we all know each other. Um, so if there's anything you want to add um, you know, to the introduction, that's fine. Okay, so first I'll do the roll call for the two board members present. Thank so you. Lila Blanchard. Present. And Terry Dunn. Present. Okay, um, so all board members are present. We have a quorum. And so I will, uh, Lila, come back to you to introduce yourself. Great, again, I'm Lila Blanchard and this is my third year on CAB. And I um, also work for Rubicon programs. And so I'll make my little Rubicon announcement and put the invitation to our stepping stone happening tomorrow in the link. Um, and yeah, I chair just for the end of, of this um, year, the programs and services um, subcommittee after we lost Dale. And I have also been on the um, policy and budget subcommittee and um, I'll put that link to Stepping Stones in the chat. Thank you. And Terry Dunn. Hi, Terry Dunn, committee member. Good morning and uh, no announcements. Okay, um, Crawford Carpenter. Crawford Carpenter, CAB member. Jill Ray. Jill Ray, Office of Supervisor Candace Anderson. Okay, and I'm Monique Tate with the Office of Reentry and Justice, so. Excellent. Thanks, everybody. Um, let's keep going. Um, any public comments on any item under the jurisdiction of the Community Advisory Board and not on this agenda? Okay, hearing none, we'll move to the next agenda item. Um, and I just put the information in the chat for that announcement. Um, okay, um, Lila, can you see the agenda on my screen? Yes, yes, okay. I can. Yeah. I can, but I can see mine much better. <laughs> okay, no worries. no worries. Yeah, so I'll just kind of be toggling back and forth between them. Um, all right, so the next uh, agenda item is approval of the minutes for the October 20th, 2022 CAB Programs and Services Committee meeting. And that's attachment one, pages four to six. So please, um, I'll give one minute. And then um, if anybody would like to make a motion for approval, then you can go ahead. And Thank you, Monique, for scrolling through that so folks can keep an eye on it, too. Anyone like to make a motion to approve those minutes? Having found my unmute button, I'm <laughs> happy to make a motion to approve the minutes. Great, and I'm happy to second that. Um, is there any public discussion or any questions or comments on these notes? All right, thank you, Monique, for doing the roll call for the two of us. Okay, so uh, Terry Dunn. Aye. Lila Blanchard. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you so much, Terry, um, and thank you, Monique. 
So our next agenda item and attachment is attachment two. Um, this is where we um, are reviewing the documents that are being forwarded on to the CCP uh, with our budget recommendations. Um, this is also a time I'd like to um, just catch up, Terry, um, if, if helpful on, you know, the planning for us to communicate some of the um, additional um, asks that we have um, that we'll be communicating verbally and then following up by in writing um, after tomorrow's meeting. Uh, so let's just open this up and see if there are any questions or comments on this um, updated version with the 5% COLA um, for each of the um, matching with the um, CBOs as well as the county departments um, per Jill Ray's suggestion. So any questions, Terry, from um, these, this attachment to? No, I mean, the 5% increase is very straightforward and uh, it makes sense. And, um, and, and, I guess the only thing I'm curious about is what's the mechanism we're going to use um, it, or, or that will be used in the CCP meeting uh, tomorrow to uh, talk about other uh, things that we're going to want to be requesting. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, well, since Crawford is on the line, I'd like to see if he is comfortable just coming offline and summarizing our process and I'll add in if, if there's anything. Um, Crawford, is that all right for you? Uh, that's fine. Uh, what we've done is we have uh, an opportunity. Uh, I'll start out on item number five on the agenda with some general comments uh, regarding where we would uh, respectfully ask for consideration of using our excess funding. That'll set the stage and uh, that'll set the stage for uh, agenda item six. And we've identified specific areas. I think one is page 37 or 38, page 48, and then I think page 64. Again, I don't have that in front of me right now. Each of those areas uh, will be addressed by Lila and Nicole. And these are areas where we would specifically like to add additional fundings. Those are in concert with the AB 109 survey from programs and services. Those items were highlighted. Yeah. In a, okay. In addition, Terry, I will make a brief reference to the other six items that we had for CAB's recommendations. And I've really chopped them down so it's kind of one-liners so we don't get too wordy. So, and, and thank you for that suggestion, Lila. So that'll be done in the introductory remarks. And then is each, you know, for example, what is it, uh, H3. When there's a discussion of H3, we have comments that we want to insert in that conversation. Now, we will not interfere with the, uh, what is it, the cadence. I think they do board members first and then public comments. And we have got that listed for how we will then respond under the public comment area. So we think we're in pretty decent shape, Terry. I trust that answers your question. It certainly does, and and uh, that's very encouraging. And uh, obviously, you guys have done a lot of planning around it, uh, which I appreciate. Sorry about that. I was muted. Um, thank you so much, Terry, and thank you, Crawford. Um, a couple things that I'd like to add um, are that you know we've had a little bit of emails and. The policy and budget subcommittee met last month and had some specific ideas about, um, you know, what we hope to see um, 
you know, as far as additional funding um, and potential additional funding uses for mental health and also for housing. So we had talked about, you know, can H3 have some additional housing funds in order to serve, um, you know, folks within um, the reentry community specifically. That was one of the specifics that came out of our conversation um, <clears throat> with, uh, you know, with policy and budget. I think that there was also, um, you know, is it possible to have um, mental health staff um, have more of a presence at some of our other, um, you know, um, AB 109 providers. Um, so those were kind of two of the um, more detailed specifics. And so while um, the main ask in um, in CAB's presentation uh, to CCP tomorrow is focused around asking um, a few departments to think creatively and to increase their ask for funding in these, you know, three crucial areas of mental health, housing, and employment services. Um, I also want to see if I can make a public comment in there um, just to have some of these, um, you know, specific ideas that we had brainstormed included. Um, and I think it's going to be a good time. I think one other thing that I'd like to highlight is that not only is this has this reserve fund grown, but the base has grown as well. And, you know, would it be possible to have, um, you know, some requests come through in these areas for, um, you know, smaller but ongoing services to address these, you know, deep needs? Yeah, so anybody want to add anything? Okay. But well, oh, well, yeah. actually, since um, since, as you said, in addition to the reserves growing, the the ongoing seems to, is increasing. Um, I I know that the five percent was uh, tied to uh, the salary increases uh, of the workers at, in the departments. Um, would it be appropriate to ask for more than 5% in this? Got it. And, and are you asking for this budget ask um, this this time? I'm, I'm just wondering, you know, I'm just bringing it up for discussion. You know, are, are we limited to 5% in, in uh, this package? Mm -hmm. um, so what I've understood is that this next CCP meeting is where CCP takes the ask from all of these different entities that are funded by AB 109 and takes a look at it and, and it's called a budget workshop. Yeah. And then in December, um, things may be updated or changed and then voted on. Um, so, you know, thus far, I think we, um, we were originally at a 3% COLA, um, which was asked for, you know, three years of a 3% COLA. And then Jill said, um, you know, the re all the other departments are going to ask for a 5% COLA because that is what the county departments have determined, I think, um, is justified or is right yeah. given the level of inflation that we're experiencing. Yeah. Um, so I think that's why we were why we were we've just been at five to this point. Um, and that's what um, I think the CAB, you know, has in this draft to ask for, but I don't know that we're you know, limited um, to this. It's just what we've, you know, a agreed to collectively so far. Um, Terry, anything else before I call, uh, before I call on Jill? Uh, well, j just, I just want to acknowledge, I know we've talked about five for a long time and I'm just kind of bringing this up here at the last minute after a lot of discussions. So I look forward to Jill's input. <laughs> it's a wonderful question and I'm glad you're asking it. Go ahead, Jill. <laughs> I was just going to add to that that um, the precedence from the past is that the um, CBOs have been given the same COLA that the county departments are given. I, I mean, you could always ask for more, but um, it would be unlikely that the county would say, oh, yes, this group can have more, but. Okay. So. 
I mean, if there's a, an ask for an additional service, that's a different discussion. Yeah. We, okay. And and that is the other thing that, that you guys are doing through the public comments tomorrow. So um, okay. we'll get there. Um, yeah. Great feedback. And um, Monique, I'm wondering if you can scroll down a bit um, to see if we did put any um, any language in here asking that the CBOs, um, COLAs stay on par with the county. Um, you know, Jill made that suggestion and I love it. And I just, I don't know that we included it in the narrative. Would it be an appropriate place to include it in the narrative or do we just wanna also say, please continue um, per, you know, practice or, and I don't, I don't know if it happened last year. I don't know how much the COLA was for the county, if it was 3%, um, the same that we got. Um, so yeah, uh, what's a good way to just capture capture that and ask that it happen moving forward? Um, I think it would be a verbal request at the time at the CCP meeting, but I could definitely check with Patrice on that. But I do think it's a verbal request. I, I and would. I think that normally when there's an increase that's different um, to put it in the notes, in the footnotes of your budget. You know, like you would just have a footnote saying we are asking for um, increased COLA to um, create parity with county departments kind of thing. Okay, thank you. Got it, okay. So I, I can add that to, you know, my comment that I'm gonna try to jump in there and make, um, in addition to saying let's fund employment and employment agencies, you know, think about um, additional requests that you have, especially ones that overlap, you know, with housing and, and mental health services. Yeah. Um, okay. I want to, uh, I just want to say hi, Elisa. I, I noticed that she's logged in and joined us. So. Um, Thank you, Terry. Glad, hi, Elisa. Glad, glad you're here. <laughs> Good morning. So, yeah, so great to have you here. We're a smaller bunch today, but we're we're making some headway. Um, and earlier on, we did a, introductions and announcements. And thank you so much, Terry, for welcoming Alyssa. Um, did you have anything you'd like to um, announce, or do you want to do a quick introduction, Alyssa? I'll just do a quick hello, Alyssa Robinson uh, with the Office of Supervisor Diane Burgess. Um, it's good to be here with you all and hear you discussing um, the budget. It's I've been an interesting process to see this development over the last month plus of, of where the budget is going and all the different subcommittees. <clears throat> you probably have an amazing bird's eye view and things <laughs> that you could share with us. Thank you so much for that. It's um, yes, we, I'm glad that we asked for 5% and, and I'm grateful for the support to get there and, um, you know, excited that something happens with these kind of these verbal requests that we're going to follow up, you know, in writing to, um, you know, to email to Paul Reyes, um, that they, um, become actionable items. Um, well, thank you so much, Elisa. Um, so we were at, um, Agenda item number four, um, and it does say that that is a voting item. Um, should we go ahead and vote to accept this document as um, as it's presented to us, Monique? We can do that. Um, I think in the other subcommittees, I stated it was a voting item, but I don't think they voted because I think it was going to be voted upon in the full cap. However, because it does say voting, you can vote if you like. And I do like the way you phrased it to accept the document as is. Um, yes. Got it. So if yeah. Like and to I vote on it, we can definitely vote on it. And I feel like we voted, but maybe we voted and then we changed it. So we'll just vote. Um, if you can do, um, yeah, if there is any public comments or discussion on these documents, or is there, I'll say, all right, yeah, if you can do the roll call, that would be okay. great. Okay, so let's do a motion and then a second. I, I move that uh, this be approved as presented. 
And I'll right. surprise, I'll second. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, okay, there's only so two of us. So. <laughs> there's only two of you, so I'm gonna do the roll call now. So Terry I. <laughs> and Lila. That's an I for me as well. Okay, so the motion passes unanimously, and I will document that in the record of action. Yeah, there's a lot of suspense about what the votes are gonna be after we make the motions, right? <laughs> yeah, yes. I know. I feel a lot of energy and excitement, and I'm just I'm very grateful yeah that we're lined up with the county and i i just yeah. i hope that moving forward that we get some asks you know from some of our entities and um you know that we can increase the amount you know spent in these very crucial categories for for folks um you know with the ab 109 funding yeah all right so the next item on the agenda is the end of year highlight for the annual report and um, if you can scroll, Monique, to that ad area, I'd just like to take this time in the meeting to kind of brainstorm um, our responses where appropriate in, in these categories. And if it doesn't come up now, that is okay. Um, Terry, if you think of things afterwards, um, please do email um, Monique and, well, yeah, please okay. just, there goes you email Monique. Yeah. yeah, we're only two. So two would be a quorum. But if you email Monique, um, I think that she could probably add it to the report for me. Is that correct, Monique? Yes, that is correct. Wonderful. OK, so the first area here is describe the activities for the past year, including areas of study, work and special events. Um, it was really helpful yesterday. Um, with a different subcommittee meeting to take a look at, at our work plan as well and draw some of the answers for these questions from the work plan. Um, trying to remember if we have our work plan here at the end. Um, we sure do. So let's just take like 20 seconds to ponder, and this is for Terry and I, and also, you know, everyone else on the call who's been to, you know, a number of these meetings. Um, so um, to think about it. And again, that first question was um, activities for the past year, including study work, special events and collaborations. And if the work plan is helpful um, in jogging our memory or coming up with ideas for that, I'll, I'll just check in in like a half a minute with folks. All right, I think I gave myself more than 30 seconds. Um, Terry, anything you want to make sure goes into this end of year report for our subcommittee for this question? Um, well, just the work that we did on uh, on the survey, um, you know, review, reviewing and editing it, um, updating it, and uh, and then uh, digesting uh, the results into into specific um, recommendations. Thank you so much. I agree wholeheartedly, and I feel like it'll be a good idea in this report to ask or advocate that ORJ help us provide a summary for the report as they did this year. Mm -hmm. um, that was so helpful and that was so great. Um, it just made it so much more user friendly because you can't send out 12 pages of a survey and have folks go, oh, wow, this makes sense or this lines up with what we were yeah. thinking. Um, so 
Thank you for that, Terry. And I do want to welcome Patrice. Hi, Patrice. Thank you so much for joining the call. Um, yeah, we're on uh, the agenda item where we are talking about our year end report, which is agenda item um, number five. Um, so thank you so much for that, uh, Terry. Anybody else on the call have anything that they would um, like to make sure gets um, incorporated in this first section of the report, which is activities from the last year from this. And I think I'll just add, um, you know, I'll review the agendas um, to see if we had any, see what presentations we had and add those. Um, even though this was kind of peripheral to this subcommittee, I would like to add that Ozzy did attend the the SF reentry uh, meeting on behalf of CAB, and I have started to get emails from them, and that has been super helpful. If we could, you know, ask for assistance for the the next year for programs and services to, um, you know, get those emails starting in the beginning of the year, you know, from Alameda County and from um, San Francisco, I think that that is going to help folks feel like they have more information, more of a bearing of what's happening in the region. Um, those were the ones we mentioned. I don't know if we mentioned Solano County, but um, you know, to start with SF and Alameda counties um, with that. Um, okay. All right, hearing um, any comments from yeah, from anybody else on the um, activity section. Let's move into the accomplishments, um, you know, particularly in reference to the work plan, which is at the end of the agenda. Um, I think we kind of covered that, but plus plus for the survey. And um, yeah, the, the way that it was so user friendly and you know, has been sharing information in a lot of different important spaces about what folks in AB 109 need and what the providers are asking for. Terry, do you want to add anything about what you feel proud about um, from accomplishments for this subcommittee? Well, I mean, it's primarily what I already said. What I was thinking of now, though, is um, if we might have some specific references to all, all the work that Dale did. Um, because, you know, he took on so many things um, and, and wove that into our work, you know, attending other meetings, working with Crawford um, on updating things. Um, Crawford, you could probably speak more specifically to it, but um, I, I just want to make sure we capture Dale's uh, oversized efforts uh, on our behalf. Thank you, Terry. That is is perfect, and um, I Could love I it. Mention some of those items, if you want to get those down. Dale was actively involved in what is it, Measure X? Yep. Homelessness, and he played a significant role in reviewing, revising our guidelines. And he also mentioned, and which I think brought up this entire conversation of excess funds and utilization and how do we approach it. I do remember an email uh, prior to his passing that I did receive that I was able to get to get with Monique and I believe, I'm not sure, Patrice, I think, and they were able to educate us a little better about excess funds, et cetera which in turn has basically led us to what we're doing tomorrow. So, uh, uh, yeah, he was a contributor, no doubt about it. That's beautiful. Um, and, and it is also, you know, something that impacted our subcommittee's work. And um, thank you for lifting that up, Terry. I will definitely make sure that I um, highlight that he was the chair, you know, for a majority of this year. And yeah. in addition to being chair, you know, all these other ways, um, he was also with the Committee on Aging, I think, 
I mean, honestly, <laughs> I think he probably just went from meeting to meeting to meeting and always showed up um, with like a wonderful spirit and readiness to do the work. Um, so I, I mean, I'd like to use the word legacy in there somewhere and, you know, highlight him and his contributions. And so if folks think of anything else they want to make sure that I add in that category, I'll, I'll make sure to do that. That um, is a huge point in addition. Thank you, Terry. Anybody else on the call um, uh, want to add anything about um, contributions or accomplishments? Um, from this subcommittee this year. All right, so let's um, take a look at this next section here, um, which I'm going to skip attendance and representation. I'll check in with you, Monique, about that section. Um, and then also the training and certification. Um, Thank you so much, Patrice, for, for offering to get that information um, to the subcommittee um, chairs who are, are updating this document to submit, um, I think, by early December. Um, so the last um, area for discussion is proposed work or objectives for next year. Um, so this is describing anything that we need to say about our work plan. Um, and including specific objectives to be achieved in the upcoming year. You know, this can also include lessons learned, um, you know, see, um, advice you'd like to give to folks on the subcommittee next year about how they can be successful or, you know, get going or move things forward. Um, one thing that, that I think would be good um, work for the committee is um, to, to, to research what programs are effective um, so that we can, um, we, can, we can have a list of resources um, that we've identified and that we're ready to uh, recommend and work into next year's uh, budget recommendations um, so that we're not, I mean, you know, this year we had the idea, we need stuff, there's money, um, let's spend money on stuff. Um, you know, <laughs> I, I think we can get more detailed than that. <laughs> um, I mean, the, the, these are, have been great first steps, uh, but, you know, next year, uh, the committee can go deeper so mm -hmm. and and earlier in the year so um so that that's ready uh before we're at this point of the process you know the day before the ccp meeting yeah may i, may I comment on something right uh, to piggyback on uh terry's comment might we add for next year the item that was mentioned in your AB 109 survey as on the horizon, pre-release training slash programs. That yeah. seems to be, so maybe we could really focus on that for next year as one of the objectives is to come up with, these are the key ingredients that individuals are telling us they need. So if we can identify, let, let's be specific, as you said, Terry, these are the items that have been identified. Then let's see which of our CBOs and staff agencies have those specific areas under their purview. Yeah. And that's where we suggest additional funding. So yeah. then, we're, then, then we're tying a bow around the doggone survey, which was fabulous, by the way. Just a suggestion, and hey, do what you want. <laughs> yeah. And 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 as we've um, been reflecting in in the last week, especially on um, uh, 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 what Nicole Green brought up about uh, the importance of of expanding the coordination of all the services uh, for those who are reentering. Um, you know, I find myself thinking more about 
you know, where is the boundary on that? You know, are, are we like just getting folks ready a week before they're coming out? Um, you know, what services can we push back into the time while they're incarcerated? Um, so, uh, so that the support doesn't just start when a person walks through a door or a gate, um, the services actually um, reach into the time when they're incarcerated. Um, I, I don't know if that's beyond our scope. Um, I don't know how that coordinates with uh, ORJ's work. Um, it's just a passing thought I thought I'd mention. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Terry. Yes, I um, I feel like last year I have a tiny bit of deja vu because last year I think we passed on that sometimes there's too much packed into the work plan. Um, and, you know, it, it can, you know, it can be hard to accomplish it all within that one year, yeah. you know, we have the survey that we're going to do and we know we can do it and we have um, a much stronger foundation for it and a usable, you know, product that we can say, let's do it again like we did last year. Um, so we know that that's going to happen. We know that there will be presentations that happen. You know, we've already, um, you know, asked if it's possible to get folks on email lists from some of the in this subcommittee from some of the surrounding, um, you know, re-entry support systems. I think I, I would also, um, you know, ask that they decide if they want to go broad or, um, you know, focus on, on issue areas um, yeah. at the first meeting. <laughs> I know that's a lot to ask, but, you know, first to second meeting, because we probably spend two or three meetings in the beginning of the year identifying all the things that we care about and, and are important. Um, but then that, you know, inevitably means we're, yeah, we're saying spend money on housing. People are talking about it all the time. Spend money on mental health because people are talking about it all the time. And here's a few gaps of services that we've noticed and continue to spend money on employment because, you know, without employment, folks, can't move forward and, um, yeah. you know, we need to work to remove some of these barriers to employment um, that folks experience um, by advocacy. So, um, you know, Crawford, I, I can write in the write-up um, pre-release planning as a, a potential suggestion. I think we probably do also want to include housing and mental health um, slash disabilities because those were identified. Um, you know, the racial justice piece does come up too. Um, I felt like there were sometimes overlaps between what programs and services and um, policy and budget were doing, and it got kind of confusing. So not that we want to hold any one subcommittee back from anything, but um, can this, sub, does this subcommittee next year want to go deeper? And if so, you know, please choose one area um of recommendation or research to focus on in order to pass that along to um policy and budget yeah hmm. anything if you want to say oh yeah if i might comment now this you know it's funny just listening to the two of you here uh i've got one of those uh out of the box maybe i don't know <laughs> comments and excuse me if it is why not have a cab meeting at one of our institutions and while at the institution have some of the maybe four or five inmates that are within let's say 60 or 90 days of release you tell us what you need so we're hearing it from the horse's mouth and it's not being filtered through some other party, some other agency, or some other individual. Um, I don't know whether something like that would be possible, but wow, if we could do that, that would be neat. And that's getting right to what is it, where the rubber hits the road. So just a thought. Thank you for that thought. And I, I wanna lift up um, 
something that Jill um, mentioned in a, a prior meeting, and I think it was Jill, and I don't think she's on the call anymore. Um, yeah, it looks like she had to hop off. Um, <clears throat> so she had talked about a best practice being um, to have some small stipend for folks who were sharing with lived experience. Um, so honoring their time and then and their vulnerability and sharing of their stories. So if we were to do something like that with folks who are incarcerated, um, it could be complicated, but I think it would be even more important to, um, you know, reward them monetarily in some way, if possible, for, um, you know, talking about services that they need and trying to help us build our program. So thank you for that, Crawford. Um, I'll just make a quick note of that. Um, any other thoughts about proposed work or plan objectives for next year? And that's for anybody on the call. Okay. Um, so yeah, whether it's reimbursing or, you know, somehow incentivizing. Um, great. I, um, one year goes by really fast and, you know, I think that the more actionable items and, um, you know, movement and impact that folks can see on the work from this subcommittee, you know, the more excited um, folks are to be part of the process. And so it's kind of like a, you know, self, self fulfilling um, kind of a situation. So thanks for that, that feedback and that information. I will be working on writing this out. And thank you, Terry, for emailing any additional thoughts directly to Monique for her to put that in and combine with what I sent her. Um, and does anybody remember the due date for that? Is it December 2nd or later? And that's okay if, if we don't have the date right now. I'll just start working on it. <laughs> okay, sounds good. So let me um, come back to our agenda here. Um, so discuss CAB Ambassador Program updates. Um, this is just a time to recognize that those are still happening, that they have started happening, and to share an update. Um, Terry, I can go first on this one, um, since I've been asking, you know, for your feedback um, first on a number of these things. Um, I have one more um, ambassador meeting to do with Lenita Mims, and that one is scheduled for EHS. Um, employment and Housing Services. I think it's called EHSC. Yeah, Department. That's what the D stands for. And that is not scheduled until like November 30th. Um, so once we have that meeting um, with the newer um, director, um, we, there, we spent some time finding the right contact and, um, you know, connecting with her. And then she needed, um, you know, some lead time. So that should be completed by the 30th, um, we did, and then I'll send, you know, the update and the notes to Monique after that. We did also, um, I completed one um, with Supervisor Joya um, and um, Reverend uh, Van Hook, um, Julius Van Hook was in that meeting and it was an encouraging positive time um, where he was supportive of all of our recommendations and, shared how supportive he wants to be of, of folks in reentry and even things that he has championed, you know, he meant, mentioned with other folks on um, the council. Um, so I will say it was just a huge treat for me to be able to meet him. I've never met him and um, he has supported Rubicon programs with sending um, one of his staff members who regularly speaks at our step, stepping stones and um, encourages all of us. And they give us certificates to every person who completes, um, you know, our foundational workshops um, on a monthly basis. So it was a joy and a pleasure. Um, Terry, do you want to share how things are going uh, with the ambassador meeting for you? 
Yeah. Um, well, it's a short report because nothing's happened. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, perhaps someone could tell me who, who the best contact would be at the CAO's office uh, for me to uh, talk to. I can provide you with that information, Terry. I'll okay. need to look it up, but I'll, I'll send it to you. Thanks, Monique. And then um, the other meeting I'm supposed to do as a second uh, is with Supervisor Mitchoff. And uh, she's actually at the end of her term. There's a new supervisor uh, who just got elected. Um, so uh, um, I'm not, um, frankly, I'm, what, I'm wondering how useful that meeting would be. And also, um, I haven't heard from Dr. Cole about that. He's the lead. And I see Patrice's hand. Yeah. Hi, everybody. So Terry, um, actually meeting with Supervisor Mitchell, even though she's stepping away, I think would still be a really great um, opportunity um, for her to hear from CAB members. She's also a member of the um, finance committee, which is where the initial um, conversation around AB 109 reserves came up. Um, and she was, she in particular um, was asking about, well, are, are there other reentry needs that these reserves could be best used for um, as opposed to having the Stand Together COCO uh, project continue to be funded through AB 109. So um, I think she would actually be really thrilled, quite frankly, to hear from CAP members, um, given that that was a topic of conversation for her, or, or at least a question for her. Um, I would also say for meeting with the CAO's office, you can certainly meet with Paul Reyes, um, who we've shared his name quite a few times, um, but he's the uh, senior deputy county administrator um, oh, yeah. that's responsible for um, supporting all of the public protection related agencies. So not only just law enforcement agencies and other justice system partners, but also um, uh, fire, emergency, uh, or what is it, I, I forget the full name of it, but anyway, <laughs> all of those, you know, more, uh, uh, when we think about public safety and, and, and public protection is a little bit broader than just um, law, uh, law enforcement and criminal justice, but he will okay. be the person to speak to, yeah. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And then um, as a bonus, and Alyssa, you can say, um, pass, it, 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 do you, are you aware if off, um, the one with uh, Supervisor Anderson has already happened or been scheduled? Burgess, Supervisor Burgess. Oh, Burgess, oh, I'm sorry, sorry. And, and yeah, we actually got to talk to Crawford and Nicole, I think it was, right, Crawford? That is correct, and it was most helpful. Thank you. It was a pleasure. And by the way, Supervisor Anderson, that interview did take place. Scott was the lead there. And Scott also took care of the court system. I assisted him with that. And the district attorney, that's been completed. I was, uh, I, I helped uh, Ozzy on that one. And then Burgess, uh, has been taken care of. And by the way, Terry, if you can put something together at the CAO's office and you're having trouble reaching uh, Terrence Cole, I'll do it with you because it's important that we get these done. And Scott reached out to me because he was having difficulty getting his second. I said, hey, use me. So I'll be more than glad I've got a script. We can use the script. I and, and uh, do your thing. How's that? Use that sounds me. great. Thank you. Use me. Okay. I feel like um, the ambassador program is one of my highlights from the time on CAB and um, just growing that those relationships and getting to meet folks who are in office and part of the you know public protection system um, has been I think one of the gifts that I'll take with me you know from the experience in CAB. So thank you so much, Terry, for that update, and thank you, Crawford, for your um, support 
so that we can make these comments happen and and have these conversations and then you know send that information back to Monique. And um, I was curious, are we planning then to see the notes from these different meetings at our last CAB meeting? Is that the plan for just kind of getting a bird's eye view of of the meetings that have taken place by the time we have our last CAB meeting? Um, I guess I can chime in. You know, I'll have to look back and see what has been done in the past, but uh, Crawford and I will be working on the December 8th agenda um, today. So Perfect. perhaps that could be something that's added to the agenda. Excellent suggestion, Lila. <laughs> yeah, so I would be working on that. <laughs> we couldn't hear... We couldn't hear you, Crawford, exactly. <laughs> oh, I just said, excellent uh, suggestion. Uh, we can add that. <laughs> yeah, in yeah. the past, it's, oh, go ahead, Patrice. <laughs> I was going to say, I believe last year we did put together a quick um, executive summary um, that accounted for some of the themes that were discussed across the different uh, meetings. So if you have meeting notes, um, please feel free to share them with uh, Monique and, and or Crawford. and. Um, we could start to um, pull something together that would kind of give a sort of a cohesive uh, uh, overview of uh, some of the discussion points and in, in the responses or reactions from um, your um, the folks you met with. Perfect. That sounds wonderful. Thank you so much, Patrice and Monique, for for that. I know I like to imagine myself as a fly on, on the wall in these different meetings. And so it's, it's nice to just kind of see a summary. Thank you. Any last comments or questions regarding the CAB ambassador program updates? And that was page 12 on the agenda. Um, and it looks like, you know, at least half of these have already happened, which is great news. Um, all right, so we'll move on to the next agenda item. That is to review our work plan. And um, so, Monique, if you can share pages 13 to 14. Can you see it? Harry's nodding his head and I am trying to make my screen bigger. <laughs> okay, okay. And I know I, you've done a great, a great deal amount of discussing it already, but yes, it is on the agenda to discuss. Yeah, we sure have. Thank you, Monique. Um, so, you know, our current work plan was structured, um, you know, and yeah, had three different areas of focus. Um, and we've touched on quite a bit of this with the year and um, summary report. Um, the first bullet point or area was advocacy and support of CAB policy um, platform. Um, and my name was listed next to that. Um, and so, you know, we did see some overlap with some other um, external boards and, um, and other locations, I, I feel like that almost, you know, connects or overlaps with the um, the third point where we wanted to survey local cabs, um, but it was slightly different. This was more within our county uh, system and structure. Um, does anybody have anything that they would like to add or update around advocacy and support of cab platform? for this document or for um, the report. And I'm sorry, I'll start with you, Terry, and then I'll, I'll move to everyone. I have nothing to add at this time. Great, anybody else? Okay, I, I guess I'll um, take this as an opportunity to just ask if, if Patrice could share a brief update about um, where the process is with the restorative justice um, coordinator position. And I, 
know that that's been a hard hire. It sounds like it's been a process and I can feel that pain sometimes. Yeah, thank you for lifting that up, um, uh, Lila. So unfortunately we had two really strong candidates, um, um, actually two, almost three that um, all accepted positions elsewhere. So we had the uh, kind of sense that maybe because of the project um, limit, the, the timestamp on the project, uh, which would have meant that we have someone on staff with us for a period of three years, um, may have been a um, kind of a disincentive if you will, especially given the, the, the economy these days. So we're looking to shift gears and instead of hiring um, a project coordinator or program coordinator um, that will be on staff with us for three years, we're looking to um, potentially launch a, a request for qualifications and have a contract with a consultant or consulting agency who could not only project manage the restorative justice initiative, but then also can do the needs assessment element, which we were going to um, uh, do a competitive bidding process for that anyway. So we're just kind of, we're planning to join those, those elements together and have one agency or consultant or consulting agency take all of that on for us. Um, the goal, it was to get it out, um, uh, next month, um, but it's looking like it might move into uh, January. Um, so either before the end of this year or early next year, we will at least have that go out. So heads up, if you know a really awesome um, consultants um, who can do some great work around this, um, please feel free uh, to, when, once we release it, share it out with them and I'll make sure you guys get access to uh, that announcement as well. Um, so that's where we're at now. We're just kind of shifting the way we're approaching it so that way we can get the work um, going. That sounds like a great plan to uh, combine those and uh, make it work with a consultant? Yeah, I'm curious if the thought is to try to find a local provider or open it up to national, um, you know, restorative justice um, agencies. I'm just curious, because I do remember from last year that we had an agency um, present, but they were very clear, like, we're at capacity, like, we can't take on any more work. And I'm just kind of curious as to where we envision the pool or applicants might come from, or if there's confidence that there will be a number of folks expressing inter interest. Yeah, you know, with these kind of things, you never know, it's sort of a hit or miss. I do have contacts though with um, similar probation offices like uh, our office, um, um, there are other reentry directors and offices at, in San Francisco and Alameda County in Santa Clara County. So I have contacts there that I will likely send out um, that announcement to, to their jurisdictions um, to see if they're familiar with any um, providers in their area that they think would be really great um, um, for uh, this, this effort. I mean, we've also worked with other organizations or the department as a whole, probation department on a no number of other projects that um, have worked with other consulting agencies that may very well have the bandwidth to do it. Um, but I think ultimately, when it comes down to the uh, review and the scoring of the responses, you know, we're gonna really look at not only the capacity and the, uh, the knowledge base of that agency or that individual um, to conduct this work, um, but then having some knowledge of Contra Costa County specifically, um, because that's going to really be, I mean, that's at the core of what this work is going to be about, especially the needs assessment, is to identify where restorative justice programming is currently happening and where it's actually needed. So we can begin to decide, uh, determine how we can utilize these Measure X dollars to help fill in the gaps, or at least begin to centralize our focus either in one part of the system 
for one specific population, maybe a combination of both. So we'll need a, a, a consultant um, that can really help guide um, that piece while also taking feedback and, um, and, um, and input from, um, from the community here in Contra Costa. Because in addition to doing that, we're also formulating either a steering committee or a work group, which I'm hoping to have a member or two from CAB that will participate in that um, to really kind of help guide the direction of this effort. So a lot of kind of moving pieces to it. And so we'll need someone, uh, we'll need an agency or, and I, I keep going back and forth because it can be an individual, right? Um, or a, a, a full-scale consultancy agency. Um, but they'll have to be able to um, do that dance, if you will, between having knowledge of the community, knowledge of Contra Costa, um, and some of the history of restorative justice work happening here, and then also having more of a broad-based knowledge and expertise around how restorative justice uh, practices, policies, and, and how it operates in different systems or organizations, how that has taken place maybe in other places. So we'll be open um, and we'll try to get it out as far and wide as possible. We could certainly use you guys' help if you have contacts as well um, so we can get a nice, robust um, competition. It is a competitive bid. So. That's super great. And you know, this was one of the recommendations that came out of this subcommittee last year. And so we see, you know, sometimes it takes some time and it's still moving forward. And so that's really encouraging. And it's it's nice to know that, um, yeah, that these, that the, the work is continuing in those two areas. And I, you know, I like that this issue was about advocacy and support of CAB policy platform. And I feel like our cab, you know, we've showed up in lots of different spaces and places, you know, whether it's, um, you know, Jill Ray or Denise saying, or, or you, Patrice, and you, Monique, you know, saying, I really think you should go to the Measure X meetings and, you know, talk about how much housing needs to be fun for the reentry population. And I was just at a meeting this last week. So, you know, not that we can say check on this area, but, you know, we have worked in this area and and um, it's great to summarize that even. Um, and so, yeah, I think that I'll make sure in the report, um, you know, again, that Dale and others, um, you know, participation in Measure X um, meetings is also lifted up. Um, all right, so the next area on here is the survey. Um, and I don't know if we were right on with the timeline um, for that. Um, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, there we go. Um, <clears throat> I feel like we were close to this. Maybe we got our findings in July or something like that, but it, I don't know that we have to write anything else down about the survey um, because I think that you know, ORJ has what's needed to kind of, you know, repeat that process. Um, Terry or anyone else on the call, did you have anything that you wanted to add about the survey and something that we should capture in writing? You know, I will say, oh yeah, go ahead, Terry. Um, so, so first I just want to confirm, the survey is done every year, is that is that right? Or is it every other year? That's right, but we skipped, um, last year because the prior um, programs and services subcommittee had gotten the survey out very late in the year so it okay. changed the timeline and we didn't want to ask them again at the beginning of the next year since we had just collected information from them okay yeah I, since um i feel like we, we did some major reworking of it and fine-tuning of it if that's a verb um in, that we got it into pretty good shape. And I, I don't think it'll take more than, I would hope it wouldn't take more than one meeting to review it, confirm that that's what we want. Um, all of which is to say, I, I hope we can get it out earlier. And, um, you know, I, well, I know we're trying to move the whole committee kind of <laughs> uh, 
the larger cab up a month too in our uh, actions in the coming year. So um, I guess I guess we have May responses in June findings on here. Um, uh, let's see, survey finalized by April. How about survey finalized by March with April responses and May findings? Does, does that seem reasonable? I think that's a great suggestion. And, you know, the earlier we have this, these findings, it's kind of like the earlier we have our mandate to dig yeah. in and to research and try to come up with more developed recommendations um, or yeah. you know more detailed recommendations. So I think this would be a question you know for ORJ. I feel like this year, um, yeah, like we did take at least three meetings in the beginning um, to kind of recreate what we needed to do because we had an old version of the survey, but, um, you know, that didn't quite have, you know, even the recommendations from the last year that we were looking at. Um, and then I know ORJ needs time on the back end to look at the survey. And then usually there's at least two asks so that we get the, these results. So um, is it okay if we, um, in the um, report out, suggest an updated timeline for this to um, May May findings. So then we have May, June, July, August, September, October, more like six months to really work with the data. So the is the request that the survey go out in, what was March? the time frame? In March? Was that March you said, Terry, for the survey to go out? Um, or yeah, no? I mean, here, well, here it says finalized by March. So. Um, I think we need to finalize the survey by February and ask that it be distributed by March, March. to have any impact. Okay, okay. So, so that puts it, you know, the, um, it seemed like this year it, it took a couple of months just to get the subcommittee to start meeting. Um, so I, I just want to make sure we're going to, to meet that, we would have to have the subcommittee actively meeting in February. Um, and um, Maybe yeah, we can this, propose this, this, like if we're ain't you right. aim for it. Yeah. yeah, it's aspirational, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And but it, yeah, the baseline is is to move all of the dates that are on there uh, up a month. Um, mm -hmm. And um, yeah, as you said, this year, you know, we kind of uh, while we were waiting for the survey results, you know, we got. Uh, you know, we had great presentations and other things, but but we didn't really dive into um, a lot of the work um, until after we had the results, which made total sense. But, you know, now that we have those strong things, I would hope for next year that um, some of that research that I was talking about could actually start early in the year um, and then get fine tuned with the updated survey results. Uh, so, you know, so we're not waiting to June to start uh, the work. An excellent suggestion. And I will make sure to include that in the, um, the year end report, which I don't, yeah. Are these gonna be included in the CAB um, agenda? He, I'm asking the same question again for another thing. Are these going to be submitted in time to be shared with the whole cab at our last cab meeting in December? Yes, it will be part of the report out. I love it. Cool. All right. So without further ado, there is um, one. Well, I, I have an ado. Okay. <laughs> um, or a to do. So. 
so with that discussion of uh of doing active research into things does that need to become an item in the work plan mm -hmm. seems like that's where that should live um can i um well let me mention something so yes. basically you're making a recommendation for the work plan which we're at the end of the year so i think it can be a recommendation but the new committee will um the new subcommittee for next year would uh, create a work plan. Is that correct, Patrice? Yeah, usually, what is it? After the retreat, um, then the subcommittees, uh, or, uh, at, well, during the retreat, folks self-select which subcommittees they want to be a part of. And then yeah. at that first subcommittee meeting, um, folks are nom. Well, well, no, they're not nominating chairs. They would have done that, I think, at the retreats. I, I can't recall the 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 at what point chairs are selected. Um, and then um, I believe it is at the retreat. And then um, that first subcommittee meeting, when you're starting to talk about your plan of action um, for the year. I think though your recommendations is a good kind of head start for yeah. people to consider, even for new members. Um, for the next year. Um, and so it can kind of, you can kind of pick up where you left off type of thing. Um, so even if, for example, no one on this committee is still on the <laughs> committee, no one currently on this committee is still on the committee next year, at least the newer members can say, well, what did, because that's usually the question, right? Well, what happened last year? Or what did they, you know, what did the subcommittee do? What do they focus on? So they can have a, at least a reference point as to what's the work to look like going forward and not have to always start from scratch. So um, right. I think, um, and I know Crawford's on the line. So hopefully you're hearing this Crawford, that might be something to consider as part of the agenda planning for the retreat um, that uh, we could take a look at some of the recommended changes to the uh, work plans of the prior, for, from the prior year to consider as yeah. kind of the um, uh, potential work plan for the- That makes a lot of sense. So, mm -hmm. so the recommendations that we make now uh, will live with uh, you, Patrice and Monique in, in ORJ and be carried into the new year or, you know, uh, I, I, I yeah, make I sure say they just put somewhere to die. And- uh, yeah. Yeah, I would say if, if we could have it documented then in in your um, report out, that would be super helpful because then we can look back at December meeting or November, which we're, okay, we're in November, November <laughs> meeting to say where it was discussed, um, where recommendations for future work. Um, and then also included in the annual report as well, because um, mm -hmm. then we could look back at that too. So there, at least there are places where it's documented where we won't lose it and can bring it back. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, That's really important and, and great. Thank you, Terry, for lifting that up. Um, sure. Well, especially, yeah. I, I may as well say this because I, I, I know that, that you're at the end of your term, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I, I don't know if you've decided if you're coming back or uh, or not. Um, you know, I, the, my needs for caring for my mom who lives with us are expanding. Mm. And so mm. in case you don't know, um, I'm, I'm going to be stepping off at uh, cab at the end of this year. So thank you for sharing that. And um, you've contributed so much and it's been a joy to be on this subcommittee with you and um yeah i take my hat off to you and lift up that you're taking care of your family and your mother and what a beautiful gift and yes um thank you for doing that and and taking care of her and, and your service to her and and your service here you know during this last year so thank you terry Thank you. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Uh, yeah, and it feels kind of ironic as we're building momentum, but uh, it happens. It happens, it happens, and there'll be other folks to come in and to pick up the torch. Um, as yeah. the rules stand right now, there's 
no option for folks to continue after three years. Um, and I will be, you know, off the cab next year. Um, and I, you know, honestly think it's probably um, a healthy rhythm, you know, and yeah. it's because it is nice to have new folks come in with new ideas. I mean, it, it can slow things down because you are passing the baton, you know, each year and there's no one to necessarily continue. Um, but I will make sure to, um, you know, put in the, the um, report out at the end of the year that um, I, you know, I feel like the research part is the hardest part, both all three years that I've been in um, on the cab and on this subcommittee, actually, um, we weren't necessarily able to produce a research product the the prior yeah. year before that did. And, and, you know, I know Patrice might have seen some of that happen, but I think she would be the only person on the call who, you know, saw like, what was the secret sauce that helped the programs and services subcommittee, you know, four years ago, write a white paper, and I'm pretty sure it was about restorative justice. And then we spent about two, two years, you know, um, until we came back to that and said, hey, look, there were these recommendations here. Will you please, you know, implement them? Um, so, yeah, okay. I'm seeing that we have about 10 minutes left. Um, and so we had the promote a comprehensive needs assessment still on the work plan. Um, are there any things that we want to add to our report um, or to our discussion of what we accomplished or didn't accomplish on the work plan for the, the comprehensive needs assessment? I don't have anything. I don't have anything either. This is kind of, you know, looped in or integrated to other things that we've already discussed. Um, yeah. Anybody? Okay. So I'll just, oh, Crawford, you're off mute. Did you have something you wanted to speak to? Uh, no, I'm uh, I'm the fly on the wall. Thank you. <laughs> All right, you you make it look so good being a fly on the wall with your wife's beautiful art in the background. <laughs> <laughs> the nicest looking fly ever. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. So... Be careful, Crawford. You know what happens to flies. So. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Oh, geez. oh, I love it. We're taking the metaphor. Yeah, forward. I like it. Um, okay, so the next agenda item is our next step. Um, so I'd like to propose that we not have a December subcommittee meeting. I feel like we completed the things that we needed to complete today. And I just want to check in with you, Terry, and see if that works for you. Um. I absolutely support that. I think that makes a lot of sense. And, you know, I know you're going to write a great report about it and um, that that wraps it up. I like it. Thank you. Um, and then the next question here is discuss upcoming cab retreat. Um, neither Terry or I will be attending that retreat. Um, is there anything that you all want to ask us to provide feedback on that retreat at this point, or should we move on from that agenda item? And that uh, question is I, for Crawford or ORJ. May I just comment a, a, a second? With your breadth of knowledge, Lila, you've mm -hmm. been through three retreats. <laughs> And uh, maybe you could be the sage in all of this and say, gee whiz, I've looked, I've participated. I would like to see, or maybe we would be better served moving in X direction rather than Y or whatever. So any comments, if you could address to us, oh my goodness, those would be, uh, it, it, it would be fabulous. Um, as we're moving forward, Patrice and I will be working on the retreat as soon as we're finished with the CCP meeting on uh, tomorrow, then hopefully over the weekend, I'm going to start attacking some of the information that when I say attack, I want to start working on it in conjunction with Patrice's guidance. 
to put something together so then we can lessen the burden on Patrice and Monique as we move forward, hopefully setting the stage for a January meeting, keeping our fingers crossed. So uh, to be succinct, yes, we need your input, absolutely. And your final departure, I believe, will be hopefully, fingers crossed, for you to assist us in moving, uh, you know, whoever the next leadership team is in order to move forward in presenting what the retreat should be and then the group can decide how they want to move forward after that. So yes, Got it. <laughs> after um, okay. all of that. <laughs> can, can you just clarify that last bit? Um, so um, we're talking about passing on suggestions for the retreat or going to the retreat as a, a prior board member to help pass the baton. I, how how okay. would you need me to help with, with the retreat? Okay, as Michael did last year, uh, first of all, if you could provide us comments on how you would like to see the retreat, that's question number one. Okay. Most important question number two, if you could play a role as Michael did last year in helping us present or to maybe briefly cover programs and services for the new group to say, this is what we did. These are some of the things we were involved in. And um, that would be so helpful. And, mm -hmm. and, and that's you know kind of what we're looking for is the previous chairs of each of the committees to assist in that effort. I love it. It's such a good idea. And thank you for putting it on my radar now, you know, before January. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Patrice. Yeah, and I don't know if you remember, Lila, because um, now that if memory serves me correctly, you even attend, I think you were probably one of the few that attended the in-person. Mm -hmm. cab retreats Ooh. yeah I think I'm the only person from this think, year who's still on yeah. yeah yeah so um so I it, it it is I think typically very helpful for new members to hear from the alumni right of uh or cab alumni where you share um lessons learned um what you felt helped you to be an engaged and um, active member of CAB, um, some things that new members can anticipate experiencing. Um, I know for me often, I feel just about every year uh, where there's either new CAB leadership or new members, um, and I have the opportunity to speak with them, I'm often um, having to uh, calm their fears because it can, be a little bit intimidating, right? Um, the the because there's so much information, so many moving parts, and um, a lot of the work is sort of interwoven together. And so, given that, and given how you felt maybe the first year versus the second year, now the third year, I think painting that picture for folks would be super helpful. And then I also want to just share too, kind of a side note um, that. Um, given that you guys won't be meeting um, in December, um, you're still very much so welcome um, to continue to participate at whatever capacity you uh, have uh, in some of the CAB's work going forward. So just because you're turning off Lila or Terry, you're having to step away, please know the door is always open for you guys to, you know, tap in, to check in, to hop on a Zoom call and, and see what's happening with CAB. We always want to keep that um, door open, especially with, uh, with older members um, so that the newer folks always know that there's other CAB folks out there in the community that have been in just as engaged as they're now starting um, to get engaged in the work. And then anything that we are typically um, doing to expand um, the breadth of reentry and um, justice efforts just through ORJ. Um, we, we will always look to have other representation from community to give us feedback and input. So as I mentioned, with even with the restorative justice work, 
like though you're not you won't be on cab anymore it'll still open the door for your participation on that if, if you have the bandwidth and if you'd like to so anyway just wanted to give give that um uh offer that to you all that the door isn't closed totally it's just a dip you may you can still participate just in a different capacity Thanks. sounds good we'll slide into a different seat go ahead terry <laughs> no I, I was just saying thank you and uh Oh yeah, now we'll be in the public, so we can still show up and uh, offer those public comments. That's right. That's right. Well, um, we are at twelve thirty. Um, Terry, did you have anything that you wanted to share about the retreat? I I feel like I don't have anything super okay. helpful to add in addition to showing up and talking to folks and Great. thinking through a little bit more what I would share. Um, I, I really like that suggestion that uh, Patrice made about uh, basically starting the subcommittee's work at the retreat by having them review the work plan, you know, getting the leadership in place. Um, Crawford, I think it's brilliant that you're going to invite uh, current uh, chairs to come in and basically bridge the work. Um, all of that is going to help with the momentum in the new year. So um, that concludes my yeah. comments. I think that would be super exciting to have your subcommittee's recommendations and work plan right when you find out you're on the subcommittee and so you're starting to think and plan and hopefully get excited about some pieces. Yeah. All right. Well, meeting adjourned. Thank you again, Terry. Thank you, Crawford. Thank you, Monique, for helping us have these meetings all year long. And thank you, Patrice, for so much leadership and support of all of us. We appreciate you all and hope that you have a great rest of your Thursday. And meetings happy adjourned. Thanksgiving. Yes, happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> happy Thanksgiving. And I'm so grateful to all of you. So. <laughs> Aw, thank you. You know Ditto, what, Patrice, happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Thank Patrice, you. we are earring twins. We used to wear the same earrings, and now we're wearing the same earrings, and they're a different pair. <laughs> Wait, I, I, I have mine. The same way, way. Oh, it's I great. have mine it's also. Oh, yes, I yes. love it. Okay, hey, may I say, Terry, where are your loops? Did you? I, <laughs> yeah, I didn't put mine on. I had one in college, and I had hair down to here, if you can imagine. But. Oh, hey, I may I say? Like May I say yes, something yes. before you you click us off? Yes, yes. Hey, Lila, thank you so very, very much for stepping up to the plate when yeah. uh, Dale passed away. And Terry, what what more can we say about you? Hey, Nothing you got to move on, but by George, you hung with us. And hey, we got slim pickings, or the committee kind of had slim pickings, and the two of you picked up the gauntlet. So hey, many thanks, and we're gonna miss both of you, doggone it. But we have your number, so watch out. Okay. <laughs> and we still have a December meeting. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, the, and I feel uh, like uh, at the December meeting, Terry, will you pull one of those guitars that are behind you and start playing it for us? Oh, yes. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> to close the meeting or something. Yeah. yeah okay. It. I'll see what I can do. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Have a good All one. Right, be well. Bye. Bye. Bye.